The Churchill Tunnel was part of the old Chesapeake and Ohio Railway, and it was built in the 1870s. The locals actually nicknamed it the Tunnel of Death because, first of all, apparently 1870s Virginians knew nothing of subtlety. That's the first thing. The second of all is that as it was being constructed, a ton of workers lost their lives. This is for a variety of reasons. Partially it is because that 1870s safety standards were, let me check my notes here, <clears throat> oh right, non-existent. Uh, they just didn't have any. Um, and, and there was an issue with the bedrock, um, where the fact that you could, you could, you could call it, um, bedrock if you want, but that's not really what it is. It's actually blue marl clay, which is shrink or swell soil. Now, the issue with this, in case you don't understand, and there will be a quiz later, so please pay attention. Shrink or swell soil, and there's a few varieties, um, basically expands a great deal when it is, absorbs wa water and shrinks a great deal when it dries. Now, soil in general will do that. That's not unusual, but it, but this is like a lot of swelling and a lot of shrinking. The result is incredibly unstable ground as well as the potential for sinkholes. Constructing a tunnel under these conditions is usually not advised. Um, e even with modern day equipment, it's generally an unsafe or at least a very difficult process to create a tunnel when the soil is this particular strain. Let's, let's, go, let's go with that. A, a ton of workers lost their lives just building this thing. And even when it was finished, it was a pain in the butt. This tunnel continued to need constant repairs because whenever it rained and whenever it dried, magically it would start to collapse again, or there'd be a breakthrough, or a variety of issues. As far as I'm able to tell, nobody died during its use, at least, you know, during it, the, the, the high point of its use. But the point is, it was a constant thing that needed constant attention to the chagrin of the Chesapeake and Ohio Railway. They, they, they really couldn't stand this tunnel because it was such a pain in the butt, because they kept having to re-maintain it to keep it safe for trains to pass through. Now, originally there was a plan, and it was actually enacted, to bypass the tunnel entirely. CNO acquired the Richmond and Allegheny Railroad, and they had built east of the Blue Ridge Mountains. Now, the tunnel is located basically in an area in Richmond, Virginia, but this new route took them around the tunnel. It also involved a viaduct, which is actually still to this day considered to be one of the longest, if not the longest, in the United States. It's a very, very large, large bridge in general. But this new route basically took everyone around the tunnel, so they stopped using it because it was just too much of, you know, a worry or, or to deal with. And the viaduct was finished in 1901, but later on in 1925, the railroad began to run into an issue where there was a capacity overload, where they were so popular people were using the railroad so much they needed to expand service and they couldn't put they could only put so many trains on one line but they could use the old line which involved the tunnel and even though the tunnel was known to be a concern they decided well we can, we can make it work it's okay it's been 20 years i'm sure we can figure it out now so they sent in 200 workmen all on flat cars with cno switch engine number 231 now 231 is a 440 steam locomotive. It is an American model. We've talked about these before. Americans are an insanely famous class of locomotive. They were the mainstay in the late 1800s and even into the 1900s when it came to railroads. They were efficient, they were powerful, they were good steam trains. At the point that 231 was being utilized, they were slowly being phased out and replaced with more modern designs, but they were still utilized as switch engines, and 231 in particular definitely has a more modern design even for an American. Generally, Americans will look like you might see in Old West movies with that, you know, wooden cab and that wide funnel, but 231 wasn't like that. 231 was a more, you know, early 1900s all-metal look with a narrow funnel. 
Um, but it was still an American, and it was still, you know, like, it was a good steam engine. Like, like the, you know, the you know, four for rows are good, good, top-notch steam engines. Even though they're called Americans, they were utilized overseas. Like, that's how good they were. So long story short is this, you know, engine took these workmen into the tunnel, and their job was to repair it, because it, since it had fallen into disuse, naturally, it, you know, hadn't been maintained very well. So they had to make sure it was safe for people to use. Unfortunately... On October 2nd, when they were doing the repairs, the work train was trapped. It was, it fell under a collapse of about 150 feet or, or 46 meters of the tunnel near the western end. Now, fortunately, a good portion of the workmen actually managed to escape. This is because of the flat cars. Since flat cars offer a significant amount of support, they were actually able to crawl underneath the, tr the, the cars and then crawl out of the collapse. They were able to get through that way. However, the firemen and the engineer in particular were not so lucky. The firemen did manage to escape. Benjamin F. Mosby did get out, but he had suffered severe burns because when the collapse happened, number 231 actually suffered a ruptured boiler. And this is terrible. If a ruptured boiler happens, that means steam gets vented all over the frickin' place. And he had severe burns. He did die hours later at the hospital. Engineer Thomas Joseph Mason was actually killed already and when they did their head count six black laborers were initially unaccounted for however when they did another count that was later scaled down to two in addition to thomas joseph mason the two missing men were laborers richard lewis and h smith they did attempt a rescue effort but every time they attempted it further cave-ins occurred they managed to get out the body of Mason, but as far as the bodies of the two laborers that were missing, they just couldn't get to them. It was far too dangerous to continue. And they, along with the engine and most of the train, were left buried inside of Churchill Tunnel for the last nearly 100 years. The tunnel, which lived up to its name, was no longer worth the risk. The unstable soil meant that continuing projects could result in serious, serious issues or loss of life. So the western end of the tunnel was actually filled in and blocked off to prevent anyone from attempting to go inside. The eastern end to this day is still left open, however, it is still considered very unsafe and you should probably not go in there as it is filled with mostly water. And there is still a wall inside the eastern end. There's simply a wall blocking where the cave -in happened as well as where the engine number 231 still remains to this day. Now, you may be questioning, well, can we get in there? Can we get it out? Is it lost for all time? And, well, that was a thought. Back in 2006, the Virginian Historical Society announced that they were investigating the possibility of recovering the train and the bodies that were missing. They wanted to haul the train up for preservation, as despite the ruptured boiler, it's probably in fairly good shape. And even the History Channel expressed interest in participating in the project, which, I mean, that'd be definitely better than ancient freaking aliens. Please stop running that. It's terrible. It's nonsense. It's ridiculous. Anyway, as a part of this project, they did drill a hole to place a camera in and see what was inside the blocked off section. And they found it was filled with silt and water. And the problem with this is that that would mean that it would probably cause a lot of cave-ins if they attempted to excavate things at all. The other issue is that there are many locals, a lot of homes that are now built on top of Church Hill. And that means that if any of the excavation caused, say, sinkholes, these homeowners would be under um, risk of their houses falling into the abyss. For this reason, the project was put on hold. And that was back in the early 2000s, and we haven't heard anything about it since. Seriously, I checked. I tried to find anything else about it. No one seems to have peeped a word since they put that camera in and realized what the situation was. It seems like the issue is that it's just too dangerous. At the end of the day, you have a tunnel, which was notorious for murdering people, and now it's underneath a bunch of people's houses. Like, yeah, there's a train down there, and it'd be great if we can get it out, as well as the two bodies to put them, you know, to a proper resting place, as well as to just being stuck behind concrete in a frickin' tunnel. But, also, you're risking people's lives here. Like, these people live in the area now, and they have to keep living there. The tunnel is now a source of a ton 
of urban myth involving a vampire that apparently lives there. No, seriously, I'm not making that up. Someone really thinks that there was a vampire that lives there, and that's why everyone died. Um, that's an urban legend in the area, apparently. Um, that has no historical relevance at all. I just thought I'd mention that. Um, but as for the train, I can't imagine it ever being taken out at this point just because of the risk involved. Like, they literally looked into it. I mean, no, I know it's right there. Compared to a lot of the trains I've talked about, it's a lot closer to the surface. I mean, it is both underwater and soil, but it's also right there. It's in a tunnel. It's where people used to be. Like, we could get to it. But at what cost is kind of the problem? Because you have to remember, this is an American model steam engine. And while it's not necessarily the classic style American, there are a lot of examples of Americans out there. It's not necessarily unique in that manner. Though I admit I would love to get in there and at least find the remains of the two men that were never found because I think they deserve a proper burial, but also, are we gonna have to make more burials as a result because we killed somebody in the process? That's kind of where it's stuck at. So at the end of the day, it might be safer just to let things be and it seems like everyone else agrees. Because, like I said, no one said a word about this thing since they actually looked into doing it. So, unfortunately, I can't imagine we'd ever see this train again. Which is a shame. But, hey, it happens, you know? But I would rather it stay there now than risk getting someone killed over it. Because I think we can all agree, that's not worth it. So with that, till next time, this is Darkness, and I bid you all a fond farewell.